trying to achieve this edit right here with the raw original image he has sent me so this one's been sent in by the freedom complex go give him a follow on instagram guys his links will be down in the description so in terms of the style we're trying to achieve a pretty decent amount of fade not too much change to the colors pretty natural colors there but we're trying to really concentrate on the contrast no grain and then doing some work with the filters trying to adjust the lighting and things like that so also guys click the link go over to his website you can sign up to his email list if you're interested in presets like his they're coming out soon so if you sign up you'll definitely be notified when they are out so guys you haven't seen a lot of content from me because i have been working really hard on my course the last few months so long story short i'm trying to create the resource i wish i had so the idea is to give you guys the knowledge and skills that i have and give them to you much faster than if you were browsing on youtube or learning from trial and error I teach why you get the results you get when you move sliders why to do that in the curves why that result happens why put that color with this color where you should put your colors to get the style you want so I'm trying to give you guys all the resources you need I'm reaching out to really talented photographers to send in their personal tutorials on their style and then giving you guys the raw images for those as well so down in the description everything you need to know there's a free lesson as well if you sign up so make sure you go do that go follow the freedom complex over on instagram guys links down in the description really awesome content guys i hope to work again with them in the future but let's get into this tutorial i'm getting quicker and quicker at going through these let's just look at the original shot so what i've done is cropped in there and it looks like we've just tried to fill the frame with our subjects rather than having this empty space all on the sides and up at the top there so cropped in let's go back to our reference here so this is the exact one off instagram something still wasn't the same over in his image so what i needed to do is come down here and bring up the distortion manually so you got profile over here and distortion here and if we just bring up distortion what it does is stretches the middle of the image and it makes your image look a bit more grander as if you took it on a wider lens so about 28 is good and then you can see we just get the uh, tusk of the elephant in the shot and then over here we are pretty much the same there now one more thing is coming down to transform here so when i was looking Looking, comparing these two images trying to crop them in the same way I started to notice the elephants look a little bigger in his one like why do they pop from the image a bit more than our one over here and it's because when you change the vertical so we're tilting the image up and it kind of makes those elephants seem a bit taller sort of stand over the pool a bit more otherwise um, they don't quite pop from the image as much so we're just gonna tilt it 13 and now slightly tilted like that and they sort of pop out of the image a little more more. okay so we're sussed for the cropping now and the first step i'll do to getting this edit is come over here and apply the preset curves balance rgb so what this preset is is if i show you the curves i just come down here all this preset is is an equal s curve in the root blue green and red so they're the exactly the same points and that just gives us a curve in each channel that's the only thing happening in this preset so the reason i chose to do that is because like i've said he uses natural tones there's not an obvious change or manipulation to colors there's no certain color in the shadows or highlights so just an s curve for contrast in the channels and i don't need to change any of these because we don't need to put orange in the shadows for example we're just keeping them all equally balanced and then there's no color change okay so i would still do changes to this curve here so having such an s curve in the red green and blue channels even though we don't want any color changes frees us up to do whatever we like in this curve and do a much more gradual s curve so we want to fade to those blacks
Okay, so I'm done with this curve now, and all that's happening is a pretty decent fade in the blacks here, and then you can see that by just looking at the darkest points, and there's like this smooth roll off of blacks. There's not these harsh, dark blacks. So then we've just got a nice gradual transition out of that, and then just like a tiny, tiny drop to the whites. So like if I hit this up here, this tells us if any whites are overexposed. So if I come back down here and hit reset, you can see that this is kind of overexposing. It's not what we want. So bringing down this little point here helps us not overexpose those and just gives a nice natural look to your image by just doing a touch of a fade up there. And I bet if we chuck his image over into the editing section, so now this is his image here, you can see that we don't have reds overexposing up in the sky here. So we're on the right track there. Okay, so back to our edit and now we just want to work with exposure. So we'll just bring up the shadows a bit because we want to be able to see more detail, see more detail in a lot of these elephants and stuff but then we also want some shadow so like we want a bit of shadow i think what i'm gonna do i'm gonna plan on doing filters down here to help our subject pop a bit more so i'm just gonna up the shadows now so i can see the whole image a bit better and then it just feels more vibrant because some people might think i have to bring the shadows down because there's all these shadows down here but we'll do those with filters so i'm gonna bring up the shadows so we get a nice vibrant feel to the image, blacks as well. We wanna be able to see more of that elephant's leg, bringing up the blacks. I think that looks a lot better. And then we're gonna bring down the highlights. So one of the key things is like, you don't wanna lose detail in your image. So like if we zoom in on these trees here, watch what happens if I drop the highlights. You can see the edges of them and that just gives a really pleasing effect to your edit sometimes, like really increases like the appearance of dynamic range. So I'm gonna drop that because I think that's what's happening in his image as well. And it just brings back a lot of detail, like dropping the highlights gets rid of a lot of glare and really brings back detail. So I see this all the time. I always see people dropping the highlights. And now with the whites, so I think we just lack a bit of pop to the image. So I'm just gonna have those brightest areas, give them a bit extra. 18 contrast maybe a bit less contrast let's just brighten that image or we'll darken think about there i think we're looking good as for these sliders here what i'm going to do is drop the clarity because this image is a jpeg and they can come off kind of digital dropping the clarity will give you a much more natural look and then because you drop the clarity, you can actually get away with um, adjusting the sharpening and still getting a natural looking image. So I'm gonna bring that up to about 90, dropping the clarity by a lot will let us keep a natural looking image. This image looks very, very blue at the moment. We want quite a warm vibe to this image. I'm just gonna increase it by a bit. Let's go with that looks a little green i could add in some purple and that probably gets us closer to a white balanced image probably should do that um i'm gonna skip that this time i'm gonna come all the way down and i'm just gonna do some really quick tweaks to the colors here and then i might have to do some filters so we obviously want a deeper blue the moment we've got like a greenish kind of blue so we want to shift the aquas like more towards a blue and then the blues towards more of a purple and it's hard to know which one of these to affect sometimes because they quite often affect the same area so you got to play around with it a lot and try to ad identify an area that is only aquas so in this image it's extra hard it looks like they're affecting basically the exact same area i'm gonna go with something like that i'm gonna increase the saturation of the blues to make them stand out and that can help us pick our hues better because we'll be able to see them better okay so i'm just going to pause for now in terms of the color adjustments and we need to do some more adjustments to the brightness so let's do some filters and i've already got them placed here so we've got a nice filter here and the purpose of this filter is to frame our subject in the image so we're going to drop the exposure press o it gets rid of the red there Okay, and then we've got another one over here. Let's run with that for now. So why I did that was there's no obvious vignette to this image, like up in the corners here. There's not a lot of darkness around the edge, but down the bottom there definitely is. And that sort of just guides our eye into the center of the image where our subjects are. So that nicely frames our subject using those filters. We're gonna grab a brush 
over top of our subject for press O. So this is just affecting our subject, a bit of the water. And what we're gonna do is just up the contrast and then maybe some shadows just to bring them out a bit more. I've got another brush over here. I just press O to show you where it's affecting. I just wanna bring out the subject a bit more. It looks good. Okay, back to these filters. So circular ones, uh, make sure it's affecting the middle and we will just bring up the exposure a bit, bring up the contrast just to make them pop a bit more like this is the focal point of the image just get them popping slightly more and then let's just bring out the shadows just to so we can see a bit more of them and then let's just do a bit of extra sharpening there let's run with that and then just one more so a filter over here on this elephant here he's one of the main ones and he's a bit too dark so let's just bring up exposure a bit so we should be good to work with our colors now like we've got the exact same brightness so a bit easier to match up the colors okay for now let's just come down to luminance of the blues let's really brighten them like we want this nice vibrant blue so let's lift it up and what it does it really brightens brightens the blues especially like in this area here because that's you can see that's very bright that area but we still get those really dark blues because of those filters we did so we get a good combination of really bright blues over here and then really dark ones over here making really nice contrast in the image saturation so very quickly looking at the back we could drop those greens i'm going to drop them all the way you can see there's a lot of green still in the image and that's because a lot of green sit within the yellows but we don't look too bad there so up here like you can see we've got a lot of greens back there and like i said just said there's a lot of green sitting in the yellows so let's warm them up a bit and we get slightly warmer yellows and greens and then even though the saturation's negative 100, we still have quite a few greens in the image. I'm just gonna warm them up quite a bit. Okay, so oranges and red, so this is like our skin tone, pretty important. Let's warm up our skin tone. Let's definitely drop the saturation. So our reds look really red. So I'm gonna to go towards an orange with the reds. Saturation, I'm gonna bring down the reds a lot. So like there's a lot of reds sitting in like the neck area. Let's drop that. And then luminance, so we want nice rich tones a lot of the time, especially for skin tones, let's drop that for the oranges, those reds, maybe just to keep a bit of a pop, let's up that a little, uh, greens, I drop the greens a touch, bring up saturation of the oranges just a little bit okay so i'm about happy with that so there's just a few other things um i've got to show you we've got some little healing masks on some leaves here in the water so what you do is just drop them on the on the water there get rid of those leaves and then there is some things to this image so once you're happy with the edit completely finished we need to do a little bit of Photoshop. So an easy way to get into Photoshop, I used to say go up to help, but there's much faster way is you right click on the image, you go to edit in Adobe Photoshop. Edit a copy and Lightroom adjustments. Okay, so in Photoshop now, and what we wanna do is get our clone brush. We wanna zoom in to about 80%. So we're in now, and what we wanna do is just extend the pool here. So clone stamp tool, we are gonna make it a bit bigger by doing the bracket key. And then what we'll do is press option, sample this area, option, come across, click it, and then click it a few times. And then it's more opacity if you click it a few times. Uh, do another option, select this area, bring it across down there. And I'll just do this really quickly. I'll sample this bit of the elephant here because I want this edge of the pool. And I'll come over here and put it on this one so it doesn't get all blurry edges. And then over this side, so bracket key, make it bigger. Okay, zooming out, I just did that really quickly, guys. It could take your time and just make sure there's no blurry edges and stuff like that, but that's just doing it really quickly. Once you're done, I go to file and I just hit save. As soon as you come back into Lightroom, it has 
already made another image for you with your adjustments but you've lost all your settings so make sure you know your settings before you do that and one other thing he has done is if I open this up he has centered himself so he's like moved the entire pool a little to the right to center himself so if I just go back to our one so we're on his one currently this is our one you can see how he's slightly out to the left now he's moved it all over to the right we won't worry about that it'll just take too long so just one thing i forgot to do is if i just get the filter back up i just think our elephants and stuff they look a little too blue over an hour our image almost overall looks a little too cold but i'm just going to put it right in the middle i'm just gonna up the warmth a bit because these this is our focal point and i just want it a bit warmer so yeah uh, elephants don't look so blue and the image pops a bit more giving off warm vibes you can sort of see it in the highlights down there i feel like they look a little warmer and brighter okay so if i just hit reset there's our before and here's our after and obviously we still don't have those photoshop adjustments but that's it guys catch you in the next one <laughs>